Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about EM algorithm in machine learning. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I will start with the problem of latent variables in maximum likelihood and then I will introduce EM algorithm in machine learning. Moving further, we will learn how it works. And after this, I will talk about Gaussian mixture models with EM algorithm. And finally, to sum up this session, I will tell you a few applications advantages and disadvantages of EM algorithm. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon for latest updates on Edureka. And also do check out the machine learning certification program. The link is given in the description box below. So let's try to understand what exactly is the problem with latent variables for maximum likelihood. In statistic modeling, a common problem arises as to how we can estimate the joint probability distribution for a data set. Now talking about probability density estimation, it is basically the construction of an estimate based on an observed data. It involves selecting a probability distribution function and the parameters of that function that best explains the joint probability of the observed data. The first step in density estimation is to create a plot of observations in the random sample. So we'll go to Jupyter Notebook and plot a random sample. So let's go to Jupyter Notebook, guys. So we'll make a new Python file. Now, first of all, I'll import matplotlib because we are going to have to plot pyplot as plt. And after this, I have to import random. From random, I have to import normal. I've made a mistake over here. I'll just correct it again. No errors now. So I'll just name my sample as sample and using this normal, I'll create a sample of size, let's say 2000. Now I'm going to plot a histogram. I'll use the sample and I'll use the bins as let's say 50 for now. Okay. So I have my distribution something like this. The choice of number of bins plays an important role here in terms of the number of bars in the distribution and in terms of how will the density is plotted. So if I change the density to five over here, you'll see what the difference it makes. Now in the above example, the distribution will be divided into five bins as shown in the image right here. So the density estimation requires selecting a probability distribution function and the parameters of that distribution that best explains the joint probability distribution of the sample. The problem with the density estimation can be following, which is how do you actually choose the probability distribution function? And the another problem is how do you choose the parameters for the probability distribution function? So the most common technique to solve this problem is the maximum likelihood estimation or simply we can call it maximum likelihood. We'll go back to the presentation guys. So talking about maximum likelihood estimation, in statistics, maximum likelihood estimation is the method of estimating the parameters of a probability distribution by maximizing the likelihood function in order to make the observed data most probable for the statistical model. But there lies a limitation with maximum likelihood as well. It assumes that the data is completely or fully observed and it does not really mandate that the model will have access to all the data in set. It assumes that all the variables relevant to the model are already present. But in some cases, some relevant variables may remain hidden and cause inconsistencies. And these unobserved or hidden variables that I'm talking about are also known as latent variables. So in the presence of latent variables, a conventional maximum likelihood estimator will not work as expected. And one such approach to finding the appropriate model parameters in the presence of latent variables is the EM algorithm or simply we can call it expectation maximization algorithm as well. So let's take a look at the EM algorithm in machine learning. EM algorithm was proposed in 1997 by Arthur Dempster, Nan Layard, and Donald Rubin. So it is basically used to find the local maximum likelihood parameters of a statistical model in case the latent variables are present or the data is missing or incomplete. So the EM algorithm follows the steps in order to find the relevant model parameters in the presence of latent variables. So first of all, we have to consider a set of starting parameters in the incomplete data. After that comes the expectation step. So this step is used to estimate the values of the missing values in the data. And it involves the observed data to basically guess the value in the missing data. After that comes the maximization step. 
This step generates complete data after the expectation step and updates the missing value in the data. And finally, we have the fourth step, which is we execute the step two and three until the convergence is met. So what basically is conversion guys? The concept of convergence in uh, probability is based on intuition. So let's say we have two random variables and if the probability of their difference is very small, it is said to be converged. And in this case, conversion means if the values match each other. And as you can see in the example over here, so we have a jigsaw puzzle. We have a missing value and then comes the expectation step. So we will put some value that matches our expectation. We'll put it in the maximization step and it will generate the data after the completion. And in the last step, we'll check if the missing value is matching the expected value or not. And if the conversion is not met, we'll repeat the step two and three until we get the correct value. So this is the EM algorithm in machine learning guys. So let's also take a look at how it actually works. The basic idea behind EM algorithm is to use the observed data to estimate the missing data and then updating those values of the parameter. Keeping the flowchart in mind, let us also understand how the EM algorithm works. So in the first step or in the starting stage, a set of initial parameters is considered. A set of unobserved and incomplete data is given to the system with an assumption that the observed data is coming from a specific model. The next step is the expectation step or we can also call it as E step. In this step, we use the observed data to estimate the missing or incomplete value or incomplete data. It is basically used to update the variables. And after that, the maximization step or M step is used to complete the data generated in the E step. So this step basically updates the hypothesis. And in the last step, it is checked whether the value are converging or not. So if the values match, then we do nothing else. We will continue with the step two and three until the convergence is met. So the EM algorithm is also known for clustering other than density estimation. So let us try to understand the EM algorithm with the help of a Gaussian mixture model. The GMM or Gaussian mixture model is a mixture model that uses a combination of probability distributions and also requires the estimation of mean and standard deviation parameters. Even though there are a lot of techniques to estimate the parameters for Gaussian mixture model, the most common technique is the maximum likelihood estimation. So let us consider a case where the data points are generated by two different processes and each process has a Gaussian probability distribution. But it is unclear which distribution a given data point belongs to since the data is combined and distributions are similar. And the processes used for generating the data points represent the latent variables and influence the data. So the EM algorithm seems like the best approach right now. So in the EM algorithm, the E step would estimate the expected value for each latent variable and the M step would optimize the parameters of the distribution using the maximum likelihood. So let's take it up to Jupyter Notebook again, guys. So let's say we have a data set where points are generated from one of the two Gaussian processes. The points are one dimensional and the mean is 20 and 40 respectively with a standard deviation 5. So what we'll do is we will draw 4000 points from the first process and 8000 points from the second process. We are going to mix them together. Okay, I'll just import a few libraries again. From NumPy, I'll import HStack. And uh, from NumPy dot, okay, I'll write it over there only. From NumPy dot random import normal and import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt so we have no errors there we have successfully imported all these libraries so you're going to need these libraries to execute this program guys so i'll name my sample as sample one and sample two so for my first sample i'll use normal now my the mean is 20 and the standard deviation is 5 and the size is 4000 first. I'll just copy this. Now for this, the mean is 40 and the size is 8000. So we have created the both samples. Now I'll take one more variable. Let's say sample is equal to, I'll put H stack, mix them together, sample one and sample two. No errors again. Now I'm gonna plot a graph guys or a histogram to show you the density estimation and I'll use the bins as 50 density is equal to 
true so we have an attribute error guys now it should show us the graph so the plot clearly shows the expected distribution with the peak for the first process is 20 and the second process is 40 and for the many points in the middle of the distribution it is unclear as to which distribution they are picked up from so we can model the problem of estimating the density of this data set using the gaussian mixture model so what we'll do is okay i'll just copy this code wait i'll write it again so from sklearn dot mixture we're going to import gaussian mixture So no errors and we have already generated the sample so i'm just gonna reshape the table again so i'll use sample is equal to sample dot reshape length of the sample one so we have reshaped the sample again now i'm gonna fit the model guys so i'll just write model over here call gaussian mixture model and n components is equal to two init parameters is equal to random i'm going to fit the model sample yes and after this i'm going to predict the latent values so let's just say i'll name it as y1 model dot predict sample and i'm going to check for the latent values for the first few points and a last few points so i'm just going to write print y1 so I'm going to check for the first few values first. Okay, I'll just write it over here only to make it clear. Y1 minus 80. That's for the last few values. Yes. So I'll, I now execute this. So as you can see guys, the above example fits the Gaussian mixture model on the data set using the EM algorithm. And in this case, we can see that for the first few and the last few examples in the data set, the model mostly predicts the accurate value for the latent variables. I run it again. Now that we are clear with the implementation of the EM algorithm using the Gaussian mixture model, let us also take a look at EM algorithm applications now. So we'll go to the presentation now. Talking about the applications of EM algorithm, EM algorithm is often used in the data clustering in machine learning and computer vision. We can also use it for natural language processing. The EM algorithm is used for parameter estimation in mixed models and quantitative genetics as well. So I've already showed you parameter estimation in mixed model using the Gaussian mixture model. And then we have psychometrics. So EM algorithm can be used in psychometrics for estimating the parameters and latent abilities of item response theory models. And some other applications include medical image reconstruction, structural engineering, etc. Now also let's take a look at a few advantages and disadvantages of EM algorithm in machine learning. So first of all, let's talk about a few advantages. So the first one is it is guaranteed that the likelihood will increase with each iteration. And during the implementation, the E step and M step are very easy for many problems. And last but not least, the solution for M step often exists in closed form. So this is a very good advantage when it comes to EM algorithm. Now let's take a look at a few disadvantages as well. So EM algorithm has a very slow convergence, which can be a major setback and it makes the conversion to the local optima only. And EM requires both forward and backward probabilities, which is also a major setback when it comes to algorithm in machine learning. So this brings us to the end of the session, guys. Don't forget to check out other tutorials on Eddie Rekha to learn machine learning algorithms such as support vector machine, decision tree, K nearest neighbor, etc. And don't forget to subscribe to Edureka and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Edureka. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!